Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be creating a stylized uh, weapon. I'm not sure if, not quite sure if you would refer to this one as an axe or I'm actually not too sure what you would name this. So I'm just going to say this is a stylized weapon. Um, but anyway, in this video I'm going to be using a concept art and the concept art is mostly uh, orthographic. There is a little bit of perspective to it, but for the most part, it's not too bad. And so I'm going to be using it. I'm going to be tracing the concept by using the Quadra tool. And uh, so this video, I'm going to speed it up a lot more than usual because this one actually took about, I think it's about six hours. And the reason it's about six hours is because this is an actual uh, tutorial. It's not fully step-by-step, -step, but uh, but I don't really skip anything, I actually show all the steps. I mean, except for maybe calling out the buttons that I'm pressing on it or anything like that. But this one is about 6 hours and this is a full tutorial that I made. And uh, the link to that is in the description if you want to actually see the full tutorial. So, this video in particular I did have to speed up a lot. And also skip a few parts because like I said it was six hours so I couldn't really speed it up so much that you know you wouldn't even be able to tell what's happening so I actually skip a few parts in this one uh, but the full tutorial includes everything pretty much like how to model it doing UVs welding and uh, creating the high poly model so for this one Obviously, there's the concept, and uh, for the most part, I'm going to be using the quad draw tool to trace the concept. And then the technique technique that I use for this one is I create the model in pieces. So I separate a few of the pieces and make them separately. And then once I'm done creating all those pieces, what I do is I weld them together. So I combine them. And then I just kind of merge some of the vertices together so that the model becomes one. And the reason for this is number one, it saves you in polys. And number two, it's usually a good idea, especially if you're making game models, to weld them together uh, for things like lighting and also for saving polys as well. So that's what I do with this one. I create the pieces separately and then weld them together. In my opinion, it also makes it easier for creating the high poly as well. And in this case, what I did was I created a low poly. I created a low poly, but I also used uh, triangles. I always get that question as to why I use triangles. Most people think that using triangles is bad. Uh, but the thing is, in games, triangles are perfectly fine. And in fact, when you import a model into a game engine, uh, the game engine automatically triangulates your model, so triangles are fine. Uh, the only issues that triangles can present is that when you're creating a high poly model, if you have triangles, you're probably going to see some bad ge geometry like pinching, stuff like that. So in that case, I think if you're making a high poly model, it's probably best to use quad only and not triangles, uh, mostly for Mostly so that you don't see any artifacts or any bad geometry when you uh, subdivide it and preview it in sub D mode. So that's one of the cases where I think it's actually better to use quads. So in this case, I did do triangles for the model, and uh, later in ZBrush, what I did was kind of clean it up by sculpting some things away. I did add some supporting geometry. But because of the triangles, I did have some artifacts. But like I said, I end up cleaning those up in ZBrush. Which, like I said, is not necessarily the best way to do it. The best way to go about it would be to just model using quads and then get the low poly out of that by collapsing geometry and then just reducing it. But in this case, like I mentioned, I did go with creating the model with triangles. So essentially I created the low poly model first and then I created the high poly from that. 
and the way I cleaned up the bad looking geometry was to sculpt it out in ZBrush, just clean it up there. So that's kind of what I used ZBrush for. And I think both ways are, I think bo both ways really work. Sometimes I use the, I use the quad uh, technique and then sometimes I go with this. So I don't think it's necessarily bad to do it this way. But you do have to be aware that you have to clean it up a little bit in ZBrush. So for this one I used ZBrush mainly to add the small details and a few things like scratches and stuff like that. And things that can be baked as normal map information onto the model. Again, like I said, this is a this is essentially a preview of a full tutorial I made. If you want to see the whole tutorial, there's a link in the video description. It's about six hours long, I think, and uh, I don't skip anything. I just make the whole thing, and you'll see how the whole thing is pretty much made. I would say it's an intermediate type of tutorial, mainly because I don't call out the uh, shortcuts that I'm using. So you are expected to know how to use Maya and ZBrush and how to actually use the tools and stuff like that. And for this one, I'm also going to show how to actually texture it from scratch uh, instead of using my usual smart material, mainly because I think it's always good to also learn how to make uh, materials in different ways. So this one's a little bit different than my actual material tutorial that I have. Uh, but it's similar at the same time. So it's a full tutorial, like I said, that's from start to finish. Where I show how to make the model, how to UV it, how to sculpt it, and texture it as well. And there's also a bonus tutorial that I created on how do I actually render in Marmoset Toolbag. I always get questions from people asking what I use to render and render turntables and stuff like that. And that's pretty much Marmoset Toolback. I use that for rendering. So I actually show that in this tutorial as well. So if you want to learn that, there's also that. I do have a video as well on YouTube on how I usually do that as well. So it's not necessarily exclusive to this. But if you want to see how I actually render this particular model, uh, there's a tutorial on that. So like I said, the tutorial link for the full video is in the video description. And this is what I would call a stylized PBR texture. So there's not a lot of big sliding. But anyway, here is the final render in Marmoset Toolback. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button, uh, sub if you're new, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in a future video.